Yo, yo, Steve Silk up in here with Reggie Hall and Robert Williams. Man, two legends. Let me start with a man over here on the left, Robert Williams. Uh, but those those who don't know about Robert Williams, everybody everybody here in Chicago knows knows who you are. But kind of give everybody an idea of your involvement as it concerns, like, say, a Frankie Knuckles, Ron Hardy, the Music Box, Power... Um, Warehouse. I, I guess you could just say I'm. Um, I've been involved since the very beginning. You know, uh, coming out of New York to Chicago, uh, it was kind of slow here. So when I made it here, uh, I invited a few people to come, like you know, Larry the band, but he refused. He was on something else. <laughs> and luckily, though, I did get Frankie to come, which I can't regret that. As a matter of fact, that was probably my better choice to bring Frankie instead of Larry but um, things you know things just sort of like progressed here and people like Steve and a few others and the brother over here they made the house music scene progress even more I'm proud to even be associated with between Frank the transition between the warehouse uh, these boys up north called Michael Graber and them they had this bar called Alfie's up on Broadway and Clark they also had a club called the Riverside Club which was on Halsted, right. 1015 North Halsted, which uh, was a little too close to Bikini Green, and they wanted to uh, get out of their situation there, so they offered us to take over that space. Well, I didn't want to be involved, so that's how me and Frankie parted company, so to speak, because he decided he wanted to be a businessman, which was cool, so he took and opened it up as a power plant. Oh, okay. As being a DJ yourself, if you're a businessman, you know that if people are coming to hear Steve, they're not thinking about Rob who owns the club, they're thinking about Steve. <laughs> okay. okay. So they're coming really, I mean, in actuality, they're coming to see you, not me. No, I own the music box along with the warehouse at the very same time, but the music box was operated out of uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. The music box was like the sister club of the warehouse, but I had opened it with a partner of mine in, in Mexico, in New Mexico. I found Ron Hardy at the Ritz on State Street, and um, I offered him a job. So it's like, you know, that's, I made him an offer he couldn't refuse. But see, you know, it's a whole psychological game. So, you know, people was like, oh, well, wait a minute, let's go to the power plant, it's new. And we're following Frankie. So I had to change the concept also to give them something new too. Right. So I closed the warehouse completely out and introduced them to the music box and a new DJ. Yeah. So we were off running again. He wasn't really a commercial DJ. Yeah. You know, he, did, he wasn't commercialized in terms of, Ron made a lot of edits which I have and stuff, but he made a lot of edits, but all the things that he basically did was for the party he made edits for his party he didn't make them for you to put on wax and stuff right. like that that's why a lot of things he lost and what have you because he only did it for the party yep. for his party it was like his family the music box it's a singing brother singing brother man just uh give us a little history lesson on you real quick well first i'd like to thank robert because had he not bring frankie knuckles to chicago i wouldn't even have a career today uh, I remember there was a guy around my house, uh, he asked my boxing instructor to do a Teddy Pendergrass song because he sang a lot like him, but my boxing instructor was like, well, I got this student, man, he's really good, you know, and uh, so he told me about an audition at Frankie's house, I went and sung one verse of an old Donny Hathaway cut, the rest is history, you know, uh, thus we came. Uh, my voice on You Can't Hide, you know that. Inglewood, you say Inglewood, who else was from Inglewood? Like wow, Tyree Cooper. Mike Dunn, uh, Hugo Hutchison, um, the the whole KKC thing, uh, Brian Fierce, Frazier, Bobby Q, Bobby, Walter Get Down Brown, uh, uh, Dangerous D, man, I, you know, and a lot of people, a lot of heads know who I'm talking about. King College, right over there on 67. Exactly. That's where I met those guys. Yeah, exactly. Because I went to UIC thinking uh -huh. I was about to get, me, get, get, get busy, and uh, the music bug hit me. I was too busy DJing and hit the book, so I ended up at, I ended up at Kennedy King. <laughs> Kennedy King. Hey, we all, we all, we all, Division One school. Yeah, yeah, we we all ended up at Kennedy King, buddy, because it, it gave us, you know, it gave us a, a, a vehicle, you know, it gave us something to do, you know, it was like a, a local area. If you're in between 51st Street to about 95th Street, 
You hearing us every Friday night. The you next- imagine somebody doing house music at Robeson High School today? Can you imagine? N- no. Yeah. No. That just shows how much things have yeah, changed. Yeah, things like, have changed like, a lot. Kids wouldn't believe that. Right. That's no, you actually did. I was there. You, you know, know what I'm It's like so totally different now. It's like you think about the parties and, you know, Izod Polo Fest and, you know, what Kanye <laughs> is wearing. Kanye is wearing now. That's what we wore. That's what back we in wore. 80, right. right. Exactly. And they think that's new. Yep. Hello, Chicago. This is Reggie Hall. And uh, if you're not doing too much, matter of fact, you shouldn't be doing nothing. Watch Chicago LP. It's about us, y'all.